In the last video, we put that little retention bracket thingy from Thermal right on top of my 12900K, or more like on top of the motherboard, but yeah, you get what I mean. Um, and I realized that in that last episode, I kind of jumped over what exactly we are building here today. So let's cover that a bit more extensively. This is the Fantex Evolve X, a beautiful case. Uh, maybe not right now, because like half of it is kind of missing, but uh, yeah, it is still a, a beautiful case once it's assembled. And we are going to water cool, hardline water cool, the crap out of my editing rig. We are still going to use the Asus motherboard that I just showed you, still the 3090Ti, still the 12900K, just a whole bunch of water cooling stuff. Um, so this case offers a lot of space for radiators, but it does not offer dual 420, which was kind of sad, but you know, I, I got used to it. And because I'm only able to fit in a single 420 rad, I thought let's just go all in and take the thickest one possible. However, I still wanted to have a white one, it is still a white case. The whole thing is going to be mainly white uh, with a bunch of black and blue accents. So uh, I wanted to try to go as wide as possible on the radiators. And thankfully, Alpha Cool has a beautiful and freaking thick 420 radiator. I mean, this thing is a monster. And given the thickness, which is, uh, I think, 60, because it's called like UT60, it, it does make sense. Um, the fins are very spaced out. You can even like see my face through it. <laughs> and uh, you will not need like an army of uh, static pressure to get this thing going. For its utility you have, oh you have a fill port in the bottom, nice to know, or a drain port, depending on how you want to see it, but you have one port in the bottom, you have two right on top and then two on each side of the red. So for the Evolve X you are not able to put in a 420 at the top, but you are able to put it in the front. Yeah. Uh, I hope this is enough cooling for my 12900K. Then for the top we are going to do another radiator, this time a 360. And this one is also 60 millimeters thick. So we have two gigantic 60 millimeters thick radiators. One on 420 and one 360. This, this is going to be freaking amazing. Uh, so this one will be going into the top. A couple of weeks ago when I was doing a fan review, somebody in the comments asked why the hell uh, would I buy a 10 year old fan to review. First off, fans do not necessarily get worse with time. It's not like GPUs where you need the newest stuff to be able to play the newest stuff. A 10 year old fan can still be very good. The bearing might not be working as properly as it is supposed to be, but you get the point. The same for cases. You can take a 20 year old case and it can be amazing. Cases, fans, coolers, all that like extra stuff, not main boards, GPUs, CPUs, you, there you want to get the newest stuff, but for fans, cases, I mean, who cares, as long as they work properly. However, in this particular case, I was doing that because I had this build in mind, because I wanted to go with the noise blocker e-loops. We have the white ones, here we have the 120mm NB e-loop B12Ps, and we here we have the B14PSs. So those are a bit quicker, I think I remember 2000 RPM and 1200, something like that, but they are looking gorgeous and they are perfectly suited to to match all of this white color. It's That's like the only reason, otherwise I would have just gone for a bunch of Noctuas, but those are so beautiful white. Uh, so that's the reason why I bought like 10 year old fans just for this one build. For the CPU, of course the CPU will also be water cooled. Why the heck am I going for two radius? radiators if I wouldn't water cool basically everything. And in this case, because we are already at like house alpha cool, I wanted to continue. I bought a gigantic block. This is, this is huge. And it is heavy, like this is a good kilogram at least. Oh damn. So we went with the black version. It does have ARGB like all over the, the place. Yeah, if, if you want that, sure, why not? Uh, I really don't care about it. I just went with it because there was no like non-ARGB thing available. So I can still shut it off. 
If you didn't know until now, I don't really care about ARGB. I mean, it's a nice gimmick and the case does have ARGB in the front, so there will be ARGB no matter what and the motherboard also has ARGB and all. You know, you have some, so that's fine with me and I will just set it to blue because all of all of the rest will be blue, the blue cables, blue accents and all of that stuff, but that's going to be fine. I also talked to Fantex like a while ago, I'm sorry Fantex, uh, but they sent over this GPU water block, which is just beautiful. It was like one of the first ones available for the 3090Ti. So I immediately jumped on it, planning all of this which is quite some time ago, but sorry Fantex. Yes, thank you for choosing Fantex, yes. Thank you for sending it over Fantex. Oh yeah, this is one giant water block for my GPU. Oh my God, this is giant. And this is supposed to be installed vertically. So uh, half the case will be this water block, which will be looking amazing. And in fact, Back then, Fendex also sent over one of their like 90 degree bent uh, GPU cables, like the, the PCIe risers, uh, because you need it. If, if uh, you want to install a, a vertical GPU in an in a Evolve X case, you need like that bracket in the bottom that comes with the case, but you need a 90 degree bend and just do yourself a favor and get the Fendex one because the holes are exactly where they are supposed to be and it makes a whole bunch of stuff easier. Plus, this one works very, very well. Uh, PCIe rises is like one of those things that, that break all the freaking time. And uh, I this one saved my ass quite a lot of times, like for other builds where the, the riser just died mid-build. And uh, I used this one, so I can maybe not vouch for it, but uh, not yet. But for the use cases that I already had for it, it saved my ass. Okay, the next part would be Fantex Glacier Art 220C, which is either a distro plate or, yeah, the big one. It, it does look like a distro plate, but it's actually more like um, a reservoir with pump. Uh, although for me, it just looks like a distro plate. But this is supposed to be going on the side here, where we, now we have like the cable hiders, which I will just, you know, mount down. I could also position it somewhere else. But I try to, to put it as low as possible so that I, I can hide the pump to some degree. Or I, I will have to see how, how this one turns out or where. In worst case scenario, I can still put it in the, in the front. Uh, we will see about that. But it doesn't come with a pump. That's one thing and something that I have not done until now would be install a pump by yourself. Like until now, I always just bought whatever reservoir with a pump. And this time it will be my first time going for a pump myself and then uh, yeah hoping that I do it the right way. <laughs> Which water cooling is kind of a mess because like you do all of the stuff and then you just hope that uh, you did not do a mistake and that water will just go everywhere in your build. Uh, so that's going to be kind of funny but we are going with a Alpha Cool Lying DC310 because according to the manual this one is supposed to fit. Well it fits. <laughs> it's that. The other reason why I went with this one is because it's all black. So even if you see it a bit, it won't be like annoying. I mean, this looks fine. Sometimes you have like uh, grayish pumps and you have like ketchup and mustard cables coming out and this is just like all black. It is clean. It is looking good. And that's what I wanted to go for. Because even if I, I need to install it in a way that you can see it, at least in that case, it is not going to be like optically un unpleasant. Then Fantex also sent over one of their really distro plates this time around. This is supposed to be installed in the back of the case. There is also a model with a, uh, a 140, let's say, compatible model, just, you know, a bit bigger. And this is like the 120 millimeter sized model. So if you put it in the back, you can see that it, it takes up the 120 millimeter screws and not the 140s. You could go for a 140. However, Fantex told me that if you use like the vertical GPU mounting, the bigger one will not fit. I cannot like double check that. I don't have the big one, but I would just guess that they are right. It's their case, their distal plate. I, I just guess that they know what they're talking about. Also, there is ARGB, I believe, in this. Yeah, there's like a cable coming out, so yeah, this is going to be ARGB. And I just see like the stupidest thing, the cable is coming out here, like on the right side. So if I install it this way, which is the correct way, because you have like the Fantex logo engraved here, and you want to read it, so you put it like this, and then you have the cable coming out this side. So I need to route it all the way there, or like 
top and then there it's it's why not put it like this this doesn't make any sense but okay we will have a look at that later on when we install it and the last pieces of eye candy are all of these boxes which are falling apart and what those are are alpha cool fittings a lot of them i bought a lot of those because last time i did hardline water cooling i bent everything myself which uh, I learned the hard way is not something easy to do and it is annoying as hell and it doesn't look as clean as if you would have just like 90 degree bands, like fittings with 90 degree bands. Uh, which is why this time around I wasn't like playing around, I wanted to go all in, get myself an army of those. To finish everything off, they are beautifully white. They are the same color as the radiator, somewhat the same color as the case. Half of my motherboard is white. The fans, the same color as the fans, or somewhat the same color as the fans. It's, oh, this is so well planned. Size-wise, I believe those are 16 millimeter ones. 16, yeah, and those are just 90 degree bends. Uh, yeah, those are the other pieces, 90 degree bends, because why the hell not? And then we have like boxes and boxes and boxes of them. And uh, yeah, I have to admit, I'm a bit in a trouble now. So back then when I planned the whole build, I had an exact structure like where which tube was going to go and I bought enough fittings to do everything. It was very well planned and I have no idea what I decided half a year ago. I, I Now I know that the 420 red has to go in the front and the 120 has to, or the 360 has to go in the top. But that's all I know. <laughs> I, I never drew anything, I have no freaking clue, but I, I bought the amount of fittings needed for the loop that I wanted to build. And now I need to figure out what exact path I wanted to take. That's, that's going to be an issue. The last piece that I didn't unbox for now are just the tubes. We have, I, I bought a bit too much tubing just to be sure that we have enough. It's like 60 millimeter thick uh, alpha cool stuff because, I don't know, I trust alpha cool. Uh, the only thing that annoys me about Alpha Cool is that they never have like a product model, whatever, on the box. It just says like Alpha Cool Hard Tube, and that's basically it. Like those here are 13 and 10, so those are not the right ones. Why are they not writing it on the box? These also seem like 13 millimeter ones. Now I'm a bit worried. Because those are definitely 60 millimeter. Are those the right tubes? Oh no. I think I bought the wrong tubes. I didn't buy any tubes at all. Like those are... I bought those years ago just to have them like in stock. And probably when I was ordering, I was thinking that I have 60 millimeter tubes, and I don't have 60 millimeter tubes. I have 30 millimeter tubes. Okay, okay, okay. I can figure this one out. So the problem is, I need my PC. <laughs> um, this is my editing rig, so uh, this needs to be finished like ASAP. Uh, I was planning to do to to finish it until like Thursday. It's Monday today. Um, and then have the PC running again, but right now I have I don't have any machine running for myself uh, And that's a problem. I have a laptop, but that's not really workable So uh, what I'm going to do now is jump onto my laptop and buy as quick as possible a bunch of alpha cool 60 millimeter hardline tubes But I, I don't know even if I pay overpriced they need to be here like tomorrow or like the day after tomorrow the latest uh, and they need to be here ASAP, probably like Amazon Prime. Um, I will figure this one out. For today, I know I presented everything, so we have that. And for tomorrow, we will build everything in. We can put in the radiators, the fans. We can put all the fittings into everything. And I can rethink or try to remember where which tube was supposed to go, so I can figure this one out. Uh, that we will for tomorrow, and then tomorrow afternoon we can water cool the GPU, water cool the CPU, put everything in, have everything set up and ready, and then just wait for the tubes. Uh, I think that's the best approach because I don't have hardline tubes right now. Damn it! But okay, for today this should be about it. Uh, if you plan to do something like this and you have a machine that you need to, to work on, um, plan your stuff better. Don't be me. This was 
not very well planned, uh, I can see now. But okay, this should be it for today. I mean, I presented everything we will be putting in here and we have enough work to do until the tubes arrive, so it's not that bad. We will figure this one out. Uh, but if you want to continue watching, have a look at the first episode where we put that uh, CPU... What, what is it called again? A retention bracket? Yeah, that's retention bracket. Where we put that retention bracket on top of the 12900K. Uh, and it didn't die, so uh, it was a good day. Uh, but yeah, hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.